is building secure infrastructure in five minutes. If you're bored of security and don't like it, just zone out for four and minutes and 50 seconds. Um, I don't know if this is the only security talk, but hopefully I can leave a good impression. Uh, quick intros, I'm Mike McCabe. I do a lot of cloud security, work with companies who are moving things into the cloud or in the cloud and trying to mature them. Um, I come from a DevOps background, so you know this is a good conference for me. Um, I'm very passionate about infrastructure as code, Terraform, things like that. So what am I talking about? Uh, everyone here is probably familiar with Terraform in some form or another. Infrastructure is code. You write code. It creates infrastructure or customizes things. It can be more than just cloud operational things. What are the benefits? Um, it centralizes deployments. That's a big thing. We can move away from click ops. Um, you can deploy consistent infrastructure. It's not, you know, test one, two, three is your EC2 name, things like that. Um, and again, it's code, so you have it in your Git repo. You have it so you can lint it. You can run security tools. Um, but what are the challenges? Terraform is often given privileged roles. We see that with CI CD systems all the time. Um, there's a lot of ways you can abuse Terraform, which I'm going to cover very quickly. Um, and so what does it typically look like? If you do DevOps or DevSecOps, you know what pipelines look like. You have your left side, um, you know, developers committing code. It goes into something like Terraform Cloud. On the other side, it contacts those APIs in your cloud and does the work. What are the steps in Terraform? There's kind of two main parts. There's Terraform Plan and Terraform Apply. The plan does what it says. It plans what infrastructure is going to be created. And then the apply does the actual reaching out to APIs and creates things. And what does Terraform actually kind of look like when it does this plan? So you can see there's specifications for different pieces. This is an EC2, for example. Uh, but if you're security minded, you see something called Git password data right there. So that should already pique your interest if you're you know, thinking about security. Terraform state's another important piece of it. A lot of folks are probably familiar with this, but um, you know, it stores the current state of your environment. From a security perspective, it's hugely important because it basically becomes a secrets manager if you deploy secrets through it. Most people don't think about it, and that's how they get hacked via Terraform state. This is an example where you have a secret string in your actual Terraform state. So if I'm a hacker, I get your Terraform state, I download it, I pull the secrets out, I pivot elsewhere to access other systems. So you have to protect the state file like it's your password manager. Um, another thing to think about is all the providers. This is all third-party code you're pulling in. These are just the providers that interact with different clouds that HashiCorp provides. There's hundreds, thousands of providers out there that are on GitHub um, and other places. So, Another fun thing, hopefully some eagle-eyed people can see the issue here, uh, Terraform does some very verbose logging that is also a source of credentials if you're a hacker. Um, if you can get access to Terraform logs, you can get things like the session keys, things like that. Um, so what are some of the techniques that I'm going to talk about very quickly that are issues? Uh, remote exec, local exec, but there's a lot of other ones besides the ones I'm covering very briefly. Um, and these are all things built into Terraform, not something that's you know, a hacker tool or anything like that. So the first one is remote exec, if there's, there's Ansible people here. But if you weren't using something like Ansible or Puppet, um, you could use something like remote exec to run scripts on an endpoint. That becomes an issue because you give developers the ability to run scripts arbitrarily on the endpoint. Same thing with local exec, except that runs where Terraform runs. So this was a fun one a little while ago, Terraform Cloud. You could run uh, local exec and get the assume role credentials for the actual uh, Terraform Cloud instance and get access to their system. So how do you prevent this? Uh, are people familiar with SEMgrep? Very, very fast. OK, one hand. That's good. Uh, it's basically a basic pattern matching tool. You can use it for security testing. It's very simple to get started. It's not a heavyweight SAST. This is what a SEMgrep rule looks like. Literally, two lines are important here, three and four, um, telling you what the pattern that you're looking for. If you can do grep, if you can do regex, you can definitely do SEMgrep. It's also free and open source, so you can integrate it into your pipeline today. Um, if you want to do something more complex, if you want more logic in your pipelines to prevent some of the things uh, we see. There's some other tools from HashiCorp. They have a paid solution called Sentinel. There's also OPA, OPA Rego, which is an open source tool from the Open Policy Agent. But even more complex rules look pretty simple. This is 16 lines of code with white space, so it's not something super complex that takes you know, a year to learn. You're just defining things you want to allow, and you're checking if those things that you want to check are right, and if they're not, you fail the test. So how do you defend against some of the issues we see with Terraform and pipelines? Um, IAM is a big one. Patterns are another way. Code review with things like SEMgrep, locking down your environment is important. Um, and yeah, that's it.
Hopefully I didn't bore you too much.